Manu Tulang is uh, future, still uncertain. Uh, uh, Leicester fullback Toulouse Vianu is side for Stade Francais, and there's been all this talk about where Manu's going to end up. Sale Sharks reported to have been circling uh, Bezier in France, this club that's apparently going to be taken over by uh, a Middle Eastern conglomerate is throwing money around like crazy and talk about him going to France. I think I think a question I've got for you is, and you speak of broadsheet writers, Rob Kitson wrote in The Guardian yesterday about, is it time for England to lose its home-based player rule? And if Manu Tuolangi did go to France and Eddie Jones insisted on picking him, RFU have to say okay, don't they? And and I could that Joe. open the floodgates to to, to to other players playing overseas like Mauro Toji because he wanted to go to France and also playing for England at the same time? I loved uh, Robert Kitson's article where he was sort of looking into the future and Manu was sipping a latte, wasn't he, on the Cote d'Azur? And that's yeah. what may happen as he comes back and maybe it would have helped mm. Johnny Wilkinson if he'd gone five or six years earlier uh, and could have extended his England career and also got more out of his England career because he suffered those horrific injuries for so long in the cold, miserable northeast. And I say that from mm. someone who's up there. I'm not anti-northeasterners. Um, look, it's 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 such a fascinating debate. And uh, I know I'm relatively strong on the fact I love the New Zealand model. I love the use of the sabbatical. Uh, in between sort of those fallow years away from World Cups, early in the World Cup cycle, senior players having the opportunity, as we're seeing with Bowden Barrett, who's going to get paid a sort of one and a half million bucks, I think, for a two-year, six... Is he, is he doing it for two lots of six months? One year and then the yeah, other? Or is that he, one and a half? And yeah. he's going to get about £780,000 per season, apparently. So yeah. Per, considerable. Yeah, money. and and great for him. And uh, I think that shows the Lord there's still the, the lure of the all-black jersey. Uh, is is such that you can go away and make some money, but he also understands that if he, he gets the system and if he wants to achieve and have more World Cup winners' medals on his shelf, then he has to come back and play. And how they found it is it's kept the vast majority of the of the of the All Black Junior representation on the island, on the two islands. I mean, there's big names like Charles Pieter who who did go early. But they're the exception rather than the rule. So to go back to your initial question with Manu, look, uh, at 29, perhaps he slightly falls into a different category, but why not go away for a year and, and not play? I mean, I would prefer him to go to Japan, and that's because of the intensity of the game. If he goes to France and goes to, let's say, for example, Bézier, I mean, the Bouclier, the top 14, goes on forever and it's a grind and it's week after week after week after week and then the knockouts and the repechage. Uh, it's not really a sabbatical. It's, it's it's stuck on a treadmill and getting pound... It's a pound of flesh stuff from there. Um, the question... So hopefully that addresses one issue. Uh, well, the I'm, question I'm really is... For the New Zealand you... model, but I believe England right. players should play in England if they want to play in the England jersey. And it but the bit about that I don't understand. Sorry for interrupting. The bit about that I yeah. don't understand is is the whole point of the global season, right? I thought was to line up club rugby and international rugby across hemispheres, so as they. But it's not there yet. No, I know, I know. But if you do get there, then isn't the whole idea that players we. We use this example so many times. It's the Lionel Messi example. He plays for Barcelona, has done since he was in the academy at age 14, but he, he's always played for Argentina because there's set international windows that he can go back and do that. If we get to that promised land of international rugby, can can the likes of Manitou Alangi not play club rugby wherever they want and then and then go back to the windows, the international windows, and play for England and everyone's happy? So, right, okay. So, yeah, but you're talking about a utopian world that doesn't exist. So I agree with you as it moves forward. If the international windows are consistent across all the leagues and the release systems for the players are consistent across all the leagues, then fine. Then you start to have a little debate about actually the ability to train together two weeks before internationals because mm -hmm. they're released from club duty. They're all together. They're all gaining that trust both on and off the pitch by doing the same level of work 
exploring IP, rugby IP, I'm talking about that, getting to a level where the, the, the national team improves, then fine. But we're nowhere near there at the moment. We are in a situation whereby if Manu were to go to France, he wouldn't be released for certain times for games. He would be forced to go back and play for his club, although I know the French leagues are slightly changing. And you lose an aspect of maintaining the quality and the integrity of the domestic league as a really strong one. And players playing together and, and picking up the idiosyncrasies of playing alongside someone who's in your England jersey or playing opposite someone who's with you in your England jersey. All these things are, add up to maintain, again, to use that word, narrative and integrity of the domestic league uh, without everyone dashing abroad. And then you start to herd cats with the current setup and formation of the international calendar and differences in timings of the international leagues. I just wonder whether the players ultimately one day take control. A bit like free agency in American sport in the NBA. In the old days, you were stuck with a club. We all watched The Last Dance and Scotty Pippen was stuck at the Chicago Bulls and he was the 120th best uh, highest paid player in the NBA, but probably the second best player in the league. And he couldn't leave because he was stuck in his contract. And now you have the likes of LeBron James who just basically do whatever they want. They go from the, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers to the Miami Heat to the LA Lakers from season to season to season. They take the money. They choose where they play. If enough high-profile players say, nah, we're going to play where we want, and if you're going to say you're not going to pick us, then we know very well it's going to affect your international team and your World Cup chances. So we're going to go to France or we're going to go to Japan. And if you're not going to pick us, then you're silly. So we went on strike in 2000 on the back mm. that ah, there's no way this will go, this game against Argentina at the weekend will go ahead without us. And it probably would have gone ahead without us and they'd have done it. And so you get into a stage of brinkmanship uh, and understanding that uh, you get into a very dangerous game about holding a, a rugby a, a national side to ransom. And I get that. But how many people are actually fighting to go abroad? And that the ability for Manu and those senior players, those 50, 60 cappers, those guys who've represented England, it might not be a number of caps, but perhaps because of injury, if you've had one cap for at least five years, then perhaps you can look into it and go away and go. And I think it would do Manu the world a good, maybe not to have an international year. Although, you know, so that argument may not be on particularly firm ground because he hasn't played a huge amount over four or five years. However, Long-winded answer to get back to the initial point. New Zealand model, I think, is great to reward senior players and the ability to go and fill up their coppers for their pensions and their later life post-rugby. Uh, but maintaining that stipulation that if you want to represent and play for England, I think it's a good model that you represent an English club. 